This question, are people born leaders, you see, to me, is a, a, it's a futile question. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to say there are no leaders. There are people who exert authority, and there are people who exert leadership with or without authority. You see, to me, to me leadership is an activity. So then, no, leaders aren't born. I believe leadership is a capacity that we can learn and can be taught. I'm Hugh O'Doherty. I teach leadership at the John F. Kennedy School of Government. I've done that for since 2000. Originally from Northern Ireland, where I grew up in the midst of conflict, which sort of launched me into this field of leadership. I, mean, I began life as a high school teacher in Northern Ireland what we call the Troubles erupted. We used the, the word the Troubles in the North as a sort of a euphemism, you know. It was a lot more than Troubles. It was a very, very violent period from 1969 to 1998. Catholics, and I was raised in the Catholic community, and my community, we sort of mobilized uh, around the issue of civil rights. It wasn't that we mobilized to, you know, get Northern Ireland back out of British control, although that's always been a theme in Irish history, of course. But this, was, this wasn't that. This was like for equal rights, you know, for jobs. It was tremendous discrimination, political gerrymandering and the voting uh, schedules and these things. When you start, uh, you know, intervening into the larger political system, it never goes well. Usually the authority structure doesn't respond benignly and didn't respond benignly in Northern Ireland. And, of course, then that led to, you know, the eruption of, of violence in the the Irish Republican Army took to the streets, and we had, so we had this 30-year period of, of, of violence. And that was settled in 1998 when we had a peace agreement that allowed the Catholic community and the Protestant community to share power. Troubles doesn't quite capture how, how violent and chaotic it all was. You know? None of us knew what to do. We were, we were absolutely lost because, you know, it, 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 it threw us into tremendous chaos and you know, what does education mean? What does schooling mean in a community that's torn apart by violence? And the community was sort of slow to engage with these questions, you know, because they're deep leadership questions. It's one thing after another, and eventually the, the thing that was really um, the turning point for me was one evening three men arrived at the home of a 15-year-old girl who had been in... I was teaching English literature and French. She'd been in both my classes, and they shot her mother, her aunt, her sister, and and uh, I'm not even sure to this day how that family were caught up in the troubles, but nothing made sense any longer, and, and so I, I quit. And that's what sort of launched me into, how do we, how do we understand the roots of violence? And what, uh, uh, I suppose, and now I'd call it leadership, what's the leadership required to bring people together, mobilize people to, you know, to face the reality of violence and to truly figure out what needs to happen in order to address that. So that was that's what sort of launched me on this uh, journey. The concept is is very confused and unclear, and 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 here I think one of the things that's happening on the one hand is glorified. You know, we're all supposed to be a leader. We're all supposed to be walking around with a big L on our forehead. Everyone's a leader, right? And on the other hand, it's trivialized because now we have like little kindergarten children are doing leadership programs and they do a little test and they get a little badge, you know, leader. <laughs> so all of that, it's just confused what the activity of leadership really entails. And, and we're sort of in that uh, morass about figuring out what it truly is these days. I think what distinguishes adaptive leadership from every other framework, and there are many, many different you know, models, interpretations of what leadership is, is that it makes a, a number of distinctions. And to me, the, the most important distinction is it distinguishes between the authority as a set of functions and leadership as an activity. And so we'd say that, that authority is something that you're given in a formal role or a position. You know, the CEO of the company or the President of the United States or any country. You get a formal role, a formal title, and with that comes certain resource. But it doesn't come with leadership. 
Uh, and, and so that raises the question, well, what is leadership? So we'd say, well, what you get with authority is a, you get resource depending on you know, that position, CEO or mayor of a, of a town. But you also come with a set of expectations. When people give the authority, they expect that in return, they're going to get something. And what they're expecting in return are what we call three services. First one is direction. Tell us where we're going. Give us the plan. You know, what's the future? Second thing is not only tell us where we're going, but keep us safe on the journey. Security, keep us safe. And of course, we have. You know, this is a huge issue these days. Obviously, homeland security. What are you going to do? We gave you the, you the authority now. Keep us safe. And then the third expectation is, you know, keep tell us where we're going. Keep us safe. Keep order. If there's conflict, make sure that things come back to status quo, back to equilibrium. As long as you keep providing those three services, fine, we'll keep giving you authority. When you start disappointing those, we can take it away. Now, it gets really confused because once we give someone the title of CEO or mayor or whatever, we, give them, we also give them the title leader. And this is where it gets, goes off the rails. There's no guarantee that simply because someone has a position of authority that they can lead. Then that gets to the second distinction. Well, what's leadership? Well, we'd say leadership is an activity. It's an activity, an action, not a role, not a position. And what is that activity? Well, it's the capacity to mobilize people to address not any old problem, very, but a very particular kind of problem. And we get into a, set, a second set of distinctions here. And we distinguish between what we call a technical problem and an adaptive problem. A technical problem is, you know, in a, in a community or an organization, we face lots of problems. But if we have within our repertoire both the information and the skills required to address that problem, we don't need learning. We don't need system change. You know, we, we have what's needed. We just need to apply it. It's much more complex. One type of problem is we might agree on the nature of the problem, but you might disagree on how to fix it. You know, for example, AIDS. For a long time, there wasn't even agreement on why. What is the problem? How do we define it? Now there's, a, there's pretty much general agreement on why it happens, but tremendous, as you know, tremendous conflict. But how to address it, particularly in Africa, and the really complex problems are where. We don't even agree on the definition of the problem to begin with. If you were to come to Northern Ireland and go to the, say, a totally Protestant community in, in Belfast, the capital city, and you say, you know, I'm from the United States and uh, trying to figure out why you people have killed one another, they might say, well, it's those Catholics, you know, they have the Pope, they have bishops and priests, and they can't think for themselves. They're just pawns to the Catholic Church, and they don't know the first thing about democracy. Not only that, they believe that violence is a valid method for change. That's the problem. You go over to the West Belfast to a completely Catholic community and say, here's the United States trying to understand why you people kill one another. They'll say, well, 1125, the British came here, and they occupied our country, and they're still here. That's the problem. So when you have very competing definitions of the problem and multiple interpretations of how to resolve, we say that work requires leadership. It requires mobilizing all the people who own that problem, the stakeholders in that sense, to face that reality and to see, can you uh, engage in, in an adaptive learning process over time that can figure out, you know, the, the real nature of the problem, so we're not just dealing with symptoms and, and make progress. And leadership's a choice available to any of us 24 hours a day. We can choose it in our families, in this moment, you know, your country. It doesn't matter. It's not given to you. No one gives you leadership. Give you authority. No one gives you leadership.